Thank you all for tuning back in. It's your boy PBK Nines giving you that dog news the way you always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. I appreciate all the ones that subscribe, all the ones that hit that button so far. Hit that like button if you like the video before you get up out of here. And don't forget to get up in them comments before you get up out of here. Hit that notification bell to let them know the video is dropping. It's your boy PBK9 give you that dog news for the day. Let's get into it. By the 1800s found many of individuals escaping the bond of the old world, the old tradition, and the grips of the oppression. You know, coming to, coming to the U.S., bringing their their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, and most of all, their family possessions. All right, during this time, there was a guy by the name of Riley. You know, that, that everybody pretty much knew. He settled in Canada, and he you know he bought his family, his dogs. They came from France. And he stayed there for a while, and it wasn't long before he moved his family down to North Carolina. He quickly developed strong relationships with a guy by the name of Colligan and Cochran. And those guys' dogs can be traced back to the foundation of Corvino and the Trice Lines. In 1913, Raleigh LaPosse had a son. <laughs> All right, I slipped up and told you his last name. Now that you know we're talking about Mr. LaPosse, you know, his last name is associated with his well-known, famous son, J.R. LaPosse. J.R. was born in Silas City in Chatham County, North Carolina. And just like his father, he had a passion and he loved dogs. As a young man, J.R. made a living for 25 years working as a butcher, you know, taking care of his family. On the side, you know, he was a um, bare knuckle boxer, open to all challenges. You know, and that was with people and his dogs. All challenges. Over the years, JR developed relationships with JP Kobe, Pete Sparks, Howard Till, um, Shiver, Howard Hensel, and BB Beatrick. I'm sure there's a lot of names that most people in the dog game, you know, are familiar with. Now Mamie Gilmore was born March 28th, 1918, in uh, Lee County, North Carolina. But in 1940, she married Mr. J.R. LaPosse, and together they carved their way into pit, American pit bull terrier history. And many families from that day will recall their kennel, Bulldog Hill, up in Sanford, North Carolina. See, Mr. J.R. LaPosse was real fond of them Kobe dogs. He, was, he, 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 he had a special place in his heart for them Kobe dogs. Then, in 1958, Miss Mamie LaPosse will give JR his very own bouncy baby girl, you know, and her name will be Patsy. And Patsy would grow to play her very own, you know, important part into the dog game. Now, although JR had two sons, Patsy was a natural. She outshined both of them when it came to the dogs, you know. And at the age of nine, you know, she was around dogs like Cotton's Bullet and dog men like um, Howard Till. They'll be up in the restaurants and paying a little 50 cents and stuff like that, do little dances and, you know, bugging out on them when she was nine years old. So she was, at a young age, she was around top dog men. So that's all she knew was top dog men and how to love them dogs the right way. Now, J.R. LaPosse, as a breeder and his dogs, as far as performance, began to get a lot of recognition. You know, as early as 1959. Now, anybody who's familiar with those dogs or that line of dogs from the La Posse line would know the Bullet Two dog, would know Tiger Lily, would know um, the uh, La Posse's Rascal dog, would know uh, Beanie. You know, there's a lot of different dogs that it was running back then, a lot of great dogs that it was running back then. And people are quick to say the Kobe dogs just aren't what they used to be. But yet, 
What's wrong with the Jeep line? What's wrong with the Jeep line? Because Finley Bowles' father, Finley Bowles' father is La Posse's dog. And I just told you that uh, Mr. La Posse loved them Kobe dogs. You know, that was some of his favorite lines. So what's wrong with the Jeep line? The Kobe may be doing more than what a lot of people think these days. You know, there are many things that happen in our lives that help uh, shape the direction or the destiny of our lives or the things we'll be going through later on in the future, you know. And Patsy's story is unique. As a young girl, Patsy was out in the neighborhood playing on the sand hill. It was a sand hill beside her house. Um, local radio station was doing some remodeling, so they stacked the sand hill beside her house. And her and the kids, some of the kids, well, actually, she was on the sand hill playing this day. The kids was in the neighborhood. And just so happened, a crazed pit bull was coming towards her. Oh, and it said a crazed dog, you know. Crazed dog showing his teeth, growling, was coming out. She seen it, and, you know, she got scared, so she broke off running. She ran back to her yard, the dog was still coming. She had no choice, but she jumped onto the doghouse in, you know, in her backyard, jumped onto the doghouse. Just so happened, the doghouse that she jumped on was the Bullet 2 dog, the Posse's Bullet 2. Now, the dog that's biting her, he, he don't care, he don't know, he just keep going. He go in the dog chain reach, Bullet 2 grab hold to the dog, kill the dog in less than 10 minutes. Kill the dog in less than 10 minutes. And that's the moment Patsy realized what these dogs were made of as companions and protectors. And in the very own words of Miss Patsy LaPosse, she was turned on right then and there, you know. And it will be more hard times to come in the future, but none, none that will break her love and stride what she was doing for them dogs. Now, after Mr. JR died, Mamie was like, maybe it's time to sell the dogs because she knew it was a lot of dog men out there that wanted to buy that stock, you know, so she was thinking about selling. But Patsy had made a solemn promise to her father that she wouldn't let the dogs go, you know. She wouldn't let the family line go no matter what, and she begged her mama not to sell them dogs. She begged her mother not to let them go. In the years to follow, Patsy tended the dogs daily. She made the planned breedings that her father told her to make when he was living, you know, and she, she kept on going with it. Now, Miss Mamie wasn't as crazy over the dogs as Patsy was. Miss Mamie was just, you know, she loved the dogs because JR loved the dogs, all right? But Patsy, she took the stud fees and the dog, the money she made off the puppies and gave it to her mother up until the time that she died, um, July 11th, 1985. Now, after Mamie died, Patsy took over sole responsibility of keeping the, uh, the posse line going, keeping the legacy going, the family legacy going, you know. And over the years, JR nor the La Posse dog has received the recognition that, that it had des it deserved. However, through 1959 to, to 1972, JR La Posse's most active years, there were very few that can compete with them. In more modern times, some might see the name Hopkins along with La Posse, and that's because um, in 89, I want to say, she married Mr. Johnny Hopkins. She married Mr. Johnny Hopkins, a man who won his first $50 in a bulldog bet, on a bulldog bet. But all in all, we're just taking a little time to honor the La Posse family for contributing their uh, mark in history with the American Pitbull Terry giving us the great dogs to have today in 2022. And we talking about breedings that happened way back in the 1900s, you know. Did those great breedings so we can have these great dogs today. I, I ain't gonna keep y'all here too long. It's your boy PBK9. So hope y'all enjoyed the little story. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit that like button, comment at the bottom. Keep everything rolling, keep everything moving. It's your boy PBK9. Give it to you, fair enough, bias. And I'm about here.